everybody. How you doing today? It's uh, Monday night, which means it's time to play some limited. I haven't had a lot of practice with this format yet. I did a couple drafts at GP Montreal, but that was kind of it. So looking forward to diving in and seeing how good it is. I'm going to start with a ranked, see how it ends up, and uh, go from there. Oh, yes, please. All right, let's make it bigger. So my first thought is, you know, baked into pie is just stupid solid and kind of always want to play it. <sighs> I've had a lot of fun with this in standard, but that doesn't seem as good. Uh, in limited. Uh, this is good. This is decent, but I'm just going to go with the straight simple removal. Go from there. Um, all right. So not a lot of black in this one here. Oops. There we go. Um, so in the limited amount of limited I've played, I really like Flutter Fox a lot. Um, it's just a 2 2 that tends to fly in this format. Um, I haven't had a lot of experience with this card. Uh, red seems pretty deep here. And this card can also just be a beater. The flying and vigilance adds up real quick, and white does not have a problem with enchantments getting them. Um. Huh. I honestly am not sure what I want to do here. Uh, obviously, the noble's not even... I mean, it's a good card, don't get me wrong, but uh, it's not something I'm happy with taking pick two. Uh, this guy's fine as well. I think the best card in this pack is just the Shine Chaser. I hate going into three colors into pick two, but... I'm also more likely to take just the best cards in any one pack and kind of figure it out as the draft keeps going. So we'll see. Okay. Um, nope. This guy is really good. I have yet to actually play with him, but he seems good. But this would put us in a solid five colors in pick three. I'm not sure if I'm that ballsy. Um... This is another straight good card, especially if we're playing and looking at maybe blue-white or some combination of Esper here. Uh, again, getting artifacts and enchantments are not that hard. But also if we're looking at some form of Esper, I almost just want to take this card. Um, we know there's not a lot of black so far, so either there hasn't been... We're not going to get a lot of black the rest of this pack, um, even if the person to our, or the bot to our right isn't drafting black, it's not great for us. So let's stick with possibly blue white. This might actually be the right pick, but I'm gonna go this way and see where it takes us. Um, can never really go wrong with a simple counter spell. Uh, if you're drawing a lot of cards, this guy is good. Uh, otherwise, the 2-4 flyer for 5 is less than impressive. Um, but you can do a lot with this card, and a 2-2 flyer for 3 at bare minimum is decent. So, let's go there. Hmm. Uh, Alright, so I think we're just going to go the flyer route at this point. Root. Um, I like the trebuchet. It does a lot of damage if you've got the the knights going, which we don't at this point. So let's just stick with the flyers. See where that gets us. Uh, I don't mind a single runaway together, especially if you have things that have good end of the battlefield effects. Um, Scalding Cauldron is also a good removal spell, especially one that cares about having artifacts. Uh, 
I feel like it's a lot easier to find runaways than it is to find scalding cauldrons. So I'm going to take that now because at this point we don't know if we're blue white, if we're blue black, if we're scrapping something all together. At this point, it definitely feels like blue is, is the direction we want to go. So we're going to take that guy. Um, so there's a lot of white here, but nothing I'm super excited to play. Uh, the fairy godmother plays well with the pathlighter, um, at least in terms of this deck better than the unicorn does, I think. Uh, I have not been impressed with this even in the knight's deck. Um, and this card I've actually been impressed with. There's a lot of removal in this set, which makes it less good. Uh, but even swinging in one time with it sometimes can be just a game changer. But I'm going to take the Godmother for how it works. Uh, and the same reasoning here. Uh, none of this is super impressive. We don't have any two drops, which is slightly annoying. Um... We also don't have any five drops, so I'll take this. I'm not super, I don't, if I play it, something's going wrong. Um, he's fine. See, I told you it was easier to get a run away. Uh, so we'll go with that. I have not sold on this one. I'll leave it in there for now. And no. All right, so what do we got? Um, our rare isn't in a color we're in, so that's vaguely annoying. And there's this guy. If we move more into the card draw, then again, <laughs> if we move into the card draw area, uh, but we're not red. I mean, we're we are definitely not stuck in white. So we could take the dragon and be open to playing blue red um, I didn't get any serious signals that red was wide open which makes me lean towards this guy again we didn't we don't really have any two drops um, and if we can start drawing more cards uh, he's going to become better and better so let's move there um, this is fine as a body but not something we're happy to play at this point um, I do feel like this deck needs a Witching Well. Uh, it allows you scry, it allows you to draw cards, it does the things this deck wants to, de to do. Um, I do love the adversary. Building around the kitty is fun, but nothing here is pulling me in any direction other than just sticking with the blue-white kind of deck. Ooh, okay. So... We've got not enough targets for this, especially when this is already in the pack. This card is a blue removal spell, and you don't get that often. Um, another adversary, which I like. There's definitely some amazing red, white, knight stuff going on here, but I'm not there. So I'm going to take the removal spell. There's a chance the blue, white, uh, rare might wheel back just because it's not a great card. Um, so I think even though we're not sold necessarily on white, Trap in the Tower is good enough to move us there. Um, she's good, but eh, um, not worth it at this point when we have some mediocre white that we don't mind playing and we can take Trap in the Tower. I really like Queen of Ice a lot. It's done a lot of work for me. Um, and the flyers are always good, but at this point, more removal is better. So I'm going to go here. Um, we already have a Witching Well, which if we knew we were going to get the blue-white rare back, it would be worth taking over opt. However, I like diversifying my options, especially when it comes to like card draw. So I'm, gonna, I'm just going to take that and give us options as we build the deck. Um, I'm not sold on any of these. If anything, this can have fun combos later, so we'll just put that in the sideboard. Uh, 
this card is less good because we don't have ways right now uh, to get cards into our opponent's graveyard. Um, I am going to take it and hope we see a um, didn't say please because uh, that'll help us get, it there, get us there. Um, but right now our removal is keeping the uh, cards on the field. So it's not as good, but still worth taking and seeing where we get. Uh, our curve is a little not where I want it right now. So I'm almost tempted to take the, the jousting dummy just as a two drop beater. But another flyer, like I said, I'm not super happy with the unicorn. I'd much rather play this guy. So we'll take that now. Um, I don't think at this point we have enough to justify playing this card, but we'll take it just in case. Uh, I don't think we have any knights. Oh, okay, I guess technically he's a knight. I'm going to the sideboard. We're not going to play that card. Uh, I'll put this in the sideboard. It's okay. And the knight deck is great. Uh, with a bunch of flyers, this is completely reasonable to play. Um, I don't know if we're going to be playing enough white to justify it, but we'll still take it. Uh, if anything, this is the most annoying card for us. Not that it actually matters in this format, but still something to think about as if it were a real draft. Huh, all right. So costs one less. Choose an artifact. So we have a couple different artifacts. We won't mind getting the Witching Well, the Cauldron, we have the Prophet. And we can always keep an eye out for other ones. We did not get the blue white rare back. So that's something. Uh, there's also Outflank, which I've been super impressed with this, and just even in Sealed. Um, huh. This is actually kind of... I'm split between these two. Uh, again, at this point, we don't have a ton to draw second cards off of. Um, so which... What rares do we have? I mean, theoretically, this one. Witching Well, Cauldron. Yeah, maybe it's not. I think maybe just the remo remo ah, removal spell is better. But this is actually kind of, this is one of those tough ones. Um, so Tiny is also worth noting, um, especially with the, the Shine Chaser. We want artifacts and enchantments. But I think... I just usually err on the side of removal. I think I'm going to go there. That might not be right. It's a tough one. Uh, this card's amazing if you have other knights. It's still not bad as a 3-3 three, three for 3. Um, which, at this point, I mean, it's it's literally just better than this card. Um, the only thing is it's worth looking at taking the Witching Well. Um but we already have a couple ways to draw cards here. I'm not sure we want to spend four twice. And there is an off chance it will trigger, though it only finds, it does find Aura, so it can find our, our uh, Trap in the Tower and Charm Sleep if we happen to have, you know, the Knight from this guy or this guy. It's honestly kind of unimpressive to be taking it here. But, eh, why not? Uh, so again, we've got So Tiny. Uh, we've got some, the Mystic Sanctuary. In terms of instants, we have Outflank and uh, Opt. We got Runaway. We don't have a whole lot. Again, I still haven't seen a, a good counter spell since like mid pack one. So this, this right now is less valuable for me. Um, I think I just want to play this so tiny. Again, we don't really have ways to get cards in their graveyard, which is vaguely frustrating, but it's something. Okay, so we have another interesting decision. We have that flying flash guy, and I really have been impressed with the one, uh, the adventure Usher to Safety. Less impressed with a 3-1, meh, whatever. Uh, it's not a knight, it's just a human peasant. But that bouncing something to your hand... Um, has been pretty impressive. 
However, I, I still think this fits the theme of our deck a little bit better. We just need more ways to draw cards. Um, but in this case, we're going to take another trap because it's removal. Uh, so here's a way to draw cards. Um, Ginger Brute, I like a lot. Not in this particular deck. We have already way too many one drops. Um, but yeah, we're going to take that guy. Ooh, another Shine Chaser. Yeah, we definitely just want to take this guy here. Ah, there's the fox. I told you I've been impressed with this guy. Uh, and we do need more two drops, so let's take him. I don't think we'll have a problem activating him. Uh, so what are we looking at in terms of... Alright, so... I really think the griffin is going to do more work in our deck than so tiny, especially since we don't have ways and we already have one in there. Yeah, I'm just going to take that. Um, take another witching well. We're going to have to kind of think about how we're laying this out here. It's going to be some interesting cuts. Uh, the last few cards. Oh, nope. Okay. So let's let's take a look at this. Uh, very clearly, we are not playing green. Um, all right, we have way too many one drops. Just straight up too many. Um, I'm gonna move this here. Again, I'm not super impressed with this card right now. Um, but in fairness, I haven't played with it a whole lot. Or, well, at all, actually, if I had it played against me. Um, but I'm gonna leave it off for now. In terms of our spread, we've got 17 creatures, uh, so we can cut a couple of those. Definitely some instants, uh, sorceries. Let's see. Uh, so all of our stuff already flies for the most part. Uh, he will <laughs> does this guy doesn't does does does. I'm not a huge fan of this card, so I'm gonna move this out for right now. Already flies, does not, but we may not be playing them. These two don't, but they're just big dudes. Um, so while this does ping the path lighter, I'm less impressed to be playing these one drops, especially when we have so many already. So we're gonna start by taking those out. Um, I I'm less impressed with, like I said, so tiny because we don't have ways to get cards in the graveyard. And the fact that we already have two trapped in the towers, they're just better than so tiny. So we're going to start there. Um, I'm going to cut one well for now. I'm going to cut one runaway because I, I don't mind one of them. Um, we may end up cutting both because this deck. Real only has, I guess it has these guys, those that work well. Hmm. We've, we're down to 15 creatures. Again, I'm not super impressed with this guy. He's still just a 3-3 Vigilance uh, that makes a 2-2 Knight which makes this a little bit better. Uh, so I am leaning towards leaving him in for that reason in particular. Um, in terms of our mana, it definitely looks like we want to be heavier blue, uh, simply for the paladin if nothing else. Um, but we have the charm sleep um, that also requires double blue. Uh, so I'm thinking that maybe the ritual comes out. I mean, adding counters to our guy is really good, but especially since we have a bunch of little dudes, but that also makes the runaway together slightly less good. Uh, so something to kind of keep in mind. Uh, outflank, so that's removal. Yeah, so the only thing that really triggers off the Pathlighter is the Unicorn, which is fine because it's still, um, like I said, at worst it's you know, a Windrake. So the question is, do we cut into the story because 
the likelihood of our opponent having seven cards, unless they're doing some kind of their own mill, um, is minimal. Um, so I think the answer here is yes. We want to keep the curve a little bit lower. Uh, so we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, eight, ten. So we only have eleven white uh, mana symbols in our deck, which makes me think I'm actually going to pull this out and change this up so that there's another island in here and is it still worth running the sanctuary um, what does it get back it gets back outflank opt run away that's really it hmm the question is is it even worth running on the chance that it comes in tapped and that is a good question I mean getting back opt or outflank makes it worth it I think I'm less worried about run away together I'm not even sure at this point if I the only reason I'm happy to play run away together is because of this guy being able to draw another card, get some more counters on these guys, I think is, is kind of useful. Hmm. I am gonna force out that though. And we'll put in, put in this land and we'll know if we tried it. It was supposed to have been a, a planes and see where we messed up. All right. So we're at 40 cards. Uh, the curve looks pretty decent. Uh, we've got some removal, got some card draw. We're basically just trying to beat people in the air, get in with evasion. Um, we don't actually have any super powerful card, which is slightly worrisome. Uh, I don't think... Okay, we technically have a rare um, that's probably never going to trigger, but we do have one. Uh, but that's it. So this is, in, in the grand scheme of things, actually not a super powerful deck. So it'll be interesting to see how it handles with uh, the format. Um, there is some synergy. We've got a bunch of flyers. We've got some card draw. Um, like I said, I really wish we had a uh, didn't say please. That would make me a lot happier. Um, I wish we'd picked up another one or two of these guys um, to kind of fill up the curve better. Um, I would gladly trade the unicorn for another paladin. Um, but it's, uh, you know, it's like a C plus deck, if I had to grade it. Um, I'm not ashamed to show somebody that I drafted this, but I'm definitely, uh, if this was to make the pro tour, I would be a little nervous. So uh, let's draft. Let's see how it works. Uh, my friends make fun of me because sometimes I say my decks are bad and it, I go undefeated and I was wrong. Uh, that's what happened at... The last chance trial for Montreal, I figured I was going to go 0-2 drop and I ended up winning it. So uh, sometimes I think I just got to let the deck do the work itself. So let's see. We're starting out in a nice low rank. So if I make a bunch of mistakes, it's okay at first. Well, we'll see how it goes. Um, so we've got a three drop, a two drop, and then a six drop, uh, which is vaguely awkward. It's not a super powerful hand if... Uh, they play like the 4-4 trample guy. We're going to have some problems. But we've got four mana, a three drop, and we go first. So let's, let's do this. Um, okay. So we drew more lands, which is not what we wanted to see. We are now at the part where basically we want to draw no more lands, and that's not where you want to be on turn two. Hmm. 
Okay, that's not good for us. Let's see what happens. I forgot to count the number of artifacts and enchantments we have. I think we have at least four or five. So that's not too bad in this deck. We may want to think about bringing in the so tiny on the off chance the fox or the blue white three drop needs some more actual artifacts and enchantments to activate themselves. Oh, that's annoying. Okay, well. Uh, this guy is not worth playing Charm Sleep on. Um, I am going to opt here, though, on my turn, because there's a good chance we'll hit something we can play, especially since we'll have three lands to do stuff with, and he's not worth Charming to Sleep. Yeah, we definitely don't want to draw that. Okay, so we have a Trap in the Tower again. Because he can only ever get to a 2-2. Not scary. We're going to put up the second blue. Um, just a fake having didn't say please. Uh, to hopefully keep our... At least make our opponent think a little bit more about what they're drafting. Or playing. But at this point we have a bunch of removal and nothing we care about removing. I mean it's not a terrible spot to be in. Ideally he'll play something... Okay, that's not that scary. Um, all right, so we'll play the cauldron. Again, we don't need to crack it right now. If he like activates this guy, we can. Um, we also can just, so next turn we're gonna either draw a land Play our six drop and bounce something. Or draw something we can play. Because um, we only have one other six drop in the deck. Uh, so other than that, we should... We have options, basically, next turn. Okay. This wasn't a card I, I thought enough about, probably, especially in this deck. I know we saw at least one go around. Um, so we'll let those resolve. He didn't play another land. So the question is, do we kill this guy with this now? I don't think we do, because on the off chance we do draw land, we can bounce. And we're not super concerned, again, about these guys right now. If we don't draw... Okay, well, hey, see, I guess we could opt back. Yep, sure. We don't mind taking that one. And then at this point, we're going to play him. Bounce this guy. If nothing else, because it costs three mana. Uh, theoretically, this is two, but he's not going to be attacking in anytime soon with it. Um, if he does, we can gladly... Bounce it. Do you have a trick? This is also a good creature to have run away with. Uh, so if we play something scary, we have options. Um, he's kind of mana screwed, so at some point he's going to draw lands and do things. So because he's mana screwed, there's a very good reason to kill this. Um, I'm also really tempted to attack. Let's opt first. Yeah, let's do that. Because then we still have enough mana to cauldron and run away. Ugh. Yep, nope. Okay, so... question is do we want to get beady or not we can also play trap in the tower on his two three i kind of like this we're going to take a slightly more aggressive approach here and play the shine chaser 
Uh, I am actually not going to attack just because we're at 13. I want to preserve a little bit of life. Just leave another fell. That'll be really depressing. I like this line of play also because next turn it leaves us with a bunch of different options. So he has a more mana. Dude, so this guy definitely going to Cauldron. Even that'll drop him down. Hmm. I'm also really tempted to charm him to sleep. Well, he's tapped out. I have all the options, so I'm going to attack in with everything. Let's uh, see what he does. I have the option to run away, to cauldron, uh, depending on how he blocks. He does something crazy. Okay. He has no mana available. Right? So that's going to be five. So I just Yeah, I think it's worth it. Oh, I should not have let. Oh well. It's cuz I'm going to Oh, I didn't actually tap both my white sources. That's impressive. Okay. Um and then he is super on the back foot. So while I could play this guy and hope to draw another card, I'm just going to put this guy to sleep. He now just basically has a 1-1. One, one. Um, yeah, he's definitely... They're definitely not in a great spot right now. might be able to see Wee Seamus in the back there making his first on-camera appearance. Hey buddy. <laughs> All right so if he double blocks we can kill both. I think I'm okay with that because we'll kill both. He'll kill both of my guys. Yeah what else? Let's do that. I guess technically I wouldn't kill. I just killed this guy. That's fine. Yeah, that's okay. We're not going to be tacking on the ground anyway. Put another guy in the air. And that's it. Oh, finally hit his fourth mana. You know, I have not played with this card yet. I'm not sure how to feel about it. It doesn't seem powerful enough. Like, if there's proliferate in this set, I'd be all over this, but I don't think it is. All right, so we're just going to attack with everybody. And then pass. This guy has flash, so we can play him whenever. See what crazy stuff he has in store. If he has a removal spell or that 2-2 two -two gets out of hand, ah, he's going to drop it to the ground. Okay, so... This will let him draw a card and make it be a 3-3. Three -three. So the question is, do I want to stop him from drawing a card? Because I can bounce it now and bounce that guy and he can't play it again. Which I think is probably worth it. I 
I mean, there's a chance they could let him put another counter on this. But the fact that he can't currently play this makes me makes it feel more worth it. And I can still flash this guy in. Oh, look, he's playing that card. Uh, yeah, I'll just pay. Means I don't get to flash this guy in. But still worth it. Well, he has seven cards in his graveyard. Got there sooner than I expected, honestly. Alright. What you doing, buddy? You got one mana left. I want to say this would be a drastically different game if he had drawn more land, but I mean, he only has two cards in his hand that he hasn't played, so it's not like they're super behind, but still. All right, more land for us. So uh, do the thing we know we need to do. Or one drop one summon still learning the cards from the set so um all right Boop. so we'll play planes play this guy because he knows we have it and then we can flash in the fairy vandal although it doesn't super change the clock at this point because he's still dead in two turns I mean, barring other removal or anything, but he's at nine. We've got five on board. This would make it six. Uh, and right now we don't have a way to to draw a card, so it's not getting bigger anytime soon. Oh, smart. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So the question is, is he going to use it? Oh, okay, so it's a blocker. Got it. So he's still, I can still attack him with a griffin without a problem. Does slow the clock a little bit. Maybe I should be playing the other witching well. All right, so here we just attack with everybody and outflank and kill his guy. Otherwise it becomes a 4-4 four, four and that's a problem. All right, so he needs to find two blockers, kill my griffin. You got a, a big dude. I am not blocking any of that. Good game. All right, so stupid flyers get there. So far, so good. Starting at the bottom, working our way up. So 
So I do want to take a look real quick because I, f I do feel that maybe we're missing out. Maybe, maybe the Witching Well should be in the deck. Maybe into the story should be in the deck. My concern is if we see like that, see an aggressive like red white deck, into the story isn't going to help us. We're just going to lose. Um, and I'm not sure what we cut over it. Again, I'm less than impressed with this guy. Uh, like in this last game, he would have just sat there a bunch of times because uh, they had stuff bigger could double block as it was they were able to kill this um we are sitting at 15 creatures uh, maybe runaway isn't the correct thing huh i just i feel like i want to be able to draw more cards So how many enter the battlefield effects do we have? We have two, three. Yeah, you know what? Let's let's try it this way. I just feel like the card draw on this deck is more important than the bounce. Like in that last one, it, it did help because it stopped him from drawing a card and let our flyer stay a flyer, which is definitely important. Um. Maybe, I, maybe opt is actually wrong. This is, this is, I, I'm not sure if this is built properly. Definitely questioning some things because the Witching Well helps with both the Fox and the Shine Chaser, which is important. It helps us draw cards later in the game when we, we got an empty hand this does give us opportunity although as we saw in the last game we end up kind of using enchantments to kill most their kill most of their stuff anyway um yeah let's try this i i'm unsure if i just made the deck better or worse i probably should have kept it as is because we won the last game but realistically a lot of that was based on our opponent getting mana screwed at the very beginning, so we had some extra room to to wiggle in things here. So let's see. Okay. If we go first, we've got this guy. We don't have any white sources. I don't feel comfortable with this. Okay, this is a little bit better. Again, we're a little we're definitely keeping it. I think outflank here is actually kind of bad because we don't have anything to do with it. Although this guy doesn't trigger at all, but it's still just a 3-3. Three, three. We do have... Huh. It feels wrong to throw the removal spell back. But right now this removal spell isn't good trap in the tower is this lets us set the next draw up yeah it may be wrong it, it may actually supposed to be the opt but i'd rather be able to go digging a little bit at first um just because i feel like we need to set up our next couple draws yeah okay I almost stupidly played opt first. Let's not do that. All right, then went the well. And what are they doing with their scry? One top, one bottom. All right, so let's see what we have. Okay, so the fox is good here. So we'll play the fox this turn. And then next turn, depending on craziness that ensues, we can either play the witching well and trapped, 
or just put down a 3-3 to put more pressure on. Um, they're playing green, which means they probably got some bigger dudes. Uh, because we don't have any other removal handy. Although this guy can get out of hand quickly. Let's... When they're playing green-blue, I'm afraid of big dumb dudes. So... I think at this point, let's scry first. Makes the fox fly. Okay, so we have another trap coming. Put that in the bottom. Which means I actually don't mind doing this here to save a little bit of extra damage. It helps us win the race because our 2 2 is gonna invariably be outclassed by something bigger that they're gonna play. But now, if they follow up with a big dumb dude, we'll have a trap in the tower waiting. I got a kitty. The kitty doesn't like me. All right, so we'll play our land. We'll swing in. Um, as much as I like to play the. 3-3 three, three with an ability. Oh, I guess we could actually... So we have the choice of playing the 3-3. Three, three, basically just as a dumb 3-3, three, three, which is completely fine as a 3-drop. Don't get me wrong. Or we can save it and pop the Witching Well. I think that's what we're going to do. Um, at this point, we, we win this race, although it's not a very exciting race um, but we have a removal spell theoretically with this we'll be able to draw a land which means we can still play both of these next turn if we draw nothing else other than land um yeah we'll just crack this now yep let's see what they got okay we ironically didn't draw a land. All right, so first things first, we'll attack. It's definitely what we're doing. Um, it's not worth trapping in the tower, this guy. I think what we do want to do is we have the opportunity here to play that knight, which we're not going to block with because we um, can then cast the contender next turn. Um, we can also look to play some variation on Contender, Vandal. If we get our fifth mana, we have all sorts of cool combinations we can do. Um, no matter what it is, it'll probably be two of these versus the five drop here. Uh, simply, if nothing else, because the Pathfighter makes this guy better. Um, okay, that's fine. We weren't blocking anyway. And he doesn't have enough mana right now to play her. That's fine. Ah, okay, so we need more land. That's fine. Um, I think here, because we have the knight and we don't mind blocking next time. Well, first we attack, that's easy. Uh, but then I think we look to play the contender to see if we can maybe grab. We still have that um, sleep card that would work. We can find with this. I think that's probably our best bet. Um, or the four drop flying knight, which would be awesome. But at bare minimum, the 3-3 three, three shuts down him attacking with the other guys. Uh, which is important for us to actually win. At least for, I guess we're both stuck at four, so that's something. All right. Watch it be four lands. Like, no! Well, I guess I'm, I'm okay with that then. Oh, 
Oh, hey, we hit. It was four lands. <laughs> yeah, all right. We're still going to take it. That's awesome. Again, we just really want to hit a land next turn. Uh, that would be ideal at this point. But I still feel comfortable with where we're at right now. All right, they got to five lands first. That could be bad for us, but I mean, right now we're okay. We've got removal, we've got guys in the air. Yeah. So there are a ton of different pump spells in this format. The vast majority give plus two, plus two. Uh, green does have access to the plus three, five, one. Either way, I'm happy to trade a trick here because even if it's plus two plus two we're not going to kill this guy um, so I'd rather make him use it on this one yep okay the guy did what he was supposed to do he find us, found us a removal spell blocked made him use a, a creature uh, and he can't cast this one right now Yep, that's fine. That is... Oh, hey, look. Lands. Ho. All right. So we've got a couple options. We know he's got the 3-2 here, which... Meh. Uh, I think we want to set up the Path Lighter to give us a little bit more options next turn. Um, and Trapped into Tower, this guy. That allows us to swing for four with... Um, taking him to eight and that puts him on a two turn clock after this uh, which is really important we could play the griffin but he's gonna be swinging in for more uh, so this just kind of evens things out <clears throat> this also again next turn allows us a bunch of different lines of play if you play something crazy you can play charm sleep another flyer or this guy so that's the path I'm gonna take since he's tapped out it doesn't really matter what order I play these in um, just before uh, attacking so I can get the extra damage in with this guy. Because um, we know he has this guy in Adventure, uh, which will make him bigger if he plays it before combat, obviously. And he, is still, he still has two unknown cards in hand uh, and only one blue source. So if he does want to crack the well open, that sets him way back. I think the plan here is if he if he has a reacher, we charm it to sleep. If he doesn't have a reacher. We play the griffin. All right. Uh, yeah, we just take three. At most, it will become eight. Well, no, he doesn't have food, so it wouldn't even become eight. Never mind. All right, so we got to land. Um, we could. There's no reason, basically, not to attack. If he has a trick, that's fine. He's more than likely going to block with something. Uh, the three two, and I'm completely fine trading this two two for a three two. Um, he has vigilance, so if he um, we're not really losing anything by attacking with him other than maybe him, which, whatever. He's not going to win us the game here. There could be an argument for playing the Charm Sleep on him to punch through for more, but it's definitely not worth it at this point. If he had, like, that 1-5 spider, that would just ruin our day. So I'd much rather leave the Charm Sleep for something crazy, especially since he knows we have it. Um... And it's kind of this looming threat there for him. Worst case scenario here is that he has, um, you know, this guy plus a pump spell. Um, or I guess this kind of pump spell. Okay, so see he, yeah, but he doesn't have food, so it's going to become big. That's fine. I don't, again, I don't mind him wasting it here because this guy doesn't actually change the game for us. So we're going to go to six. 
Um, he has one card in hand. He can't do got five, six. Yeah, I'm not worried about this right now. So I'm just going to play another flyer to basically make sure we, we win next turn. Now he has to get rid of uh, two creatures, uh, which is less likely. Alright, so five, six at most. If he had a way to make a food and then had another insatiable appetite, that would be lethal. Um, there's also that Garuk's card, but that gives non humans plus three, and he has all humans. So I'm not going to block here. If anything, I should have maybe blocked the apprentice with the griffin, but I don't, I want to put him in the back seat where he needs to have answers. Okay. But he doesn't have a food token, so I'm not actually dead. Right, because it needs food. Yeah. Nobody's randomly food, right? <laughs> yep. So. Good game. Nice. Okay, once again. Flyers. Just always a good option in uh, Limited. You don't need rares if you have evasion. All right, let's keep ranking up. See what we can do. Uh, ooh, all the things. Holy moly. Okay. More. Yep. All right. Let's go back. Come on. All right. Just five more wins to go. We got this. All right, this hand doesn't do a whole lot, but we have cards to find. We're gonna draw some cards. That is a removal spell, so we're gonna keep it. We're, we're going first. It's not the, the high impact card I or hand I wanna see, but it gives us options, so I'll take it. You know, realistically, I should probably be holding on to these ops for a time when it's better for this deck. Ooh, all right. I'm telling you, I love this fox, man. So much work. I'm really overvaluing this random two-drop common, but every time I play him, I'm just happy to see him. I really want to see this in foil, just because the little the little uh, wings on the feet, so cute. So if he has a two drop, we we'll play the cauldron, so we can fly over. If he doesn't, we play the tomb raider, tomb raider, uh, and uh, oh, see, okay, yeah. Really, I don't know that I would. I would be hard pressed to play this without a knight on the field, in all honesty. Um, so we don't need this guy to fly, so I'd rather just uh, advance our board and draw a card. Uh, though, 
a land was not what I was hoping to draw, but that's okay. Um, next turn, worst case scenario, we play another Tome Raider and then the Cauldron. And then, you know, we're attacking for three in the air at minimum. Um, and it looks like there's some kind of black-white knight deck. Yep. Oh, and they're having mana problems. We're having the opposite. Oh, I should have. Oh, well. I should have played this before playing a, a land, but it doesn't actually matter. Because, see... Ah, we'll play the Witching Well. That way they don't know we have the Cauldron. Oh, wow, I'm glad I played the Witching Well. Yikes! Looks like we are definitely having opposite problems here. Alright. So I feel pretty good about where we're at right now. We've got four turns at this rate, at bare minimum. Can't even equip this guy yet. Uh, we are never blocking this guy unless we're basically dead because uh, the flyers matter so much more than the one point of life. Especially in black-white knights because there's so many ways to get cards back. Oh yeah, okay. Never blocking. So now the question is, do we... Ooh, okay. So there's definitely an argument to be made where we just kill the Swordmaster now. Um, simply because of the life gain. Because we're only doing four a turn, him, them gaining half of that life back is really frustrating. Um... That being said, I'm almost tempted to play the Shine Chaser. Um, unfortunately, it would only be a 2-2 at this point. Um, and if they draw a land, they can equip here, and that would be super annoying. So I think I am going to... Uh, now I'm second-guessing myself. Gives it plus two. Would still be able to kill it. You know, I'm, gonna do, I'm actually going to... This might be wrong. But what I'm going to do is actually just attack. Pass my turn. Uh, and then on their turn, depending what they do, I have the option to crack the Witching Well or Cauldron onto the Swordmaster. It gives me a little bit more options, because uh, at this point I just want more cards. Uh, next turn we'll be able to play... Uh, so I think we're going to do this in response. Yeah. Uh, that's basically three life that they're not gaining this turn, um, which matters in the long run here. Because they're, again, on the back foot and they'll just concede. Okay. Cool. All right. Let's keep going. All the shiny things. I need to do this more of the controlling like I have something. I let Arena run with me too much. She really looks like Rob Lowe, by the way. It kind of bothers me. Anyways, all right, so our opponent goes first. We don't have blue. We have more blue than white. But if we don't hit blue, we're in big trouble. So the question is, how greedy do we want to be? Um, I think we're gonna mulligan this. I don't. I don't, I really hate needing to draw land when you already have three lands in your hand. Okay, so this is better. So we're gonna keep this removal. If anything, this might be the weakest card right now because we don't have another way to draw things. 
and this does pair well with this. Although if we don't draw more lands, it's awkward. Um, you know, evasion has just been winning us games. I'm going to keep with that. Let's just keep the flyer that we know can do work. It's always disappointing mulliganing, but I mean, so far this deck has mulliganed well. Um, again, because we don't have a single bomb that wins us games, just being consistent is good. Okay, I don't like this card. I've been super unimpressed with it. Especially if you, for equipping for five is so painful. There are a few cards in the set that make it less painful, but like this again, I wouldn't play without having a creature that can equip to. Um, already on the field. Ooh, pretty. One of my favorites. All right, so we're gonna pass for now, maybe flash this guy in. Again, we don't currently have a way to draw cards, so it makes him less good, but still a 1-2 flyer will poke him to death. Yep. Ooh. Okay, so we don't have a knight. So that card's... Not as good. Again, I think the plan here is just fly over and try to poke him in the face a bunch of times. Green does have options for reach creatures, which makes the trap in the towers even more important. Uh, so we'll see as the board develops where we need to play some. Okay, you can get in for one. Alright, so the question is... Well, first things first. Let's just poke him, poke him in the face. So, I wish we had Adamant. But, I think we still play, get a 2-2 flyer. Uh, next turn, if we draw land, we have the option of a con contender and trapped in the tower or just contender or both trapped in the towers so i think you play this first and two two ooh, spicy three colors can't cast this guy currently which is good for us since it's a two three and all of our guys just run headlong into it All right, they're thinking hard. I don't know why you'd do that right now, but okay. Um, so I think on the off chance that they have some kind of, I mean, they could still do it in response, but I think I'm gonna play contender before combat and we whiff. That's okay. It's pro bound to happen in this deck. So, um, and there's literally zero reason to trap Hansel and Gretel in a tower. That is mixing of the fairy tales and we don't need to do that. 
with three colors and four cards in their hand. Well, five technically that we can see. They've got to have something crazy. And uh, that is not it. That is n no. I, I don't care at all if Hansel and Gretel bite me in the butt. All right. Uh, here we just punch him in the face for a lot. Um, I, theoretically, we can trap them in the tower. I don't think we need to, though. I'm really not concerned with what they've got going on here. I mean, I am slightly concerned because they have all of the mana and all of the cards. But we've got four creatures they need. Well, okay, three. They don't really need to deal with a contender with a three, four. Hansel and Gretel, but. Ooh, fun. This is a super greedy deck. They've got three four this this guy the three forests needed two white needed uh, i don't know if the black is a splash they just happen to draw too many yikes okay well i would probably trap this guy in the tower anyways just because he can get out of hand real fast and then we have outflank if something gets crazy which it didn't so all right not sure what that deck was trying to do. Um, it looked like it could have been super powerful. All right, keep going up. Eee, all the shiny things. All right, let's keep going. Just need three more wins. So, you know, it's all good. Again, just evasion gets there. Just need flyers. All right. You know, all this time I never realized that was a dragon right there. Wow. Okay. Um, so we're definitely keeping this. Um, I would really love to see a witching well um, or a cauldron uh, or a trapped in the tower just to power this guy. Oh, see, we got the fox. I'm happy with the fox. I'd also like to see another island, uh, so we could play out flank and then, oh, he's got the fox too. Oh. Oh, remember this was the island that was supposed to be a plains, but we changed it. See, definitely needed the island. Um, all right, I think we offer the trade here because we can have tricks they can't. We're gonna play this Tome Raider, draw a card, hopefully find something better than an island or not. That's fine as well. No blocks. Oh, okay. So now we definitely would like our fox to fly because the two, three ghost stops the the flying fox, and that's not good for us, which we didn't get. Okay. Um, so what we're going to do right now, this is just a one, one flyer. However, it turns out flank on, which I actually want to do because of the mystic sanctuary here to follow up with. And if he doesn't block, we'll just use it on the... Okay, he's blocking. Nope. Okay. Basically, that means we'll attempt to use it when they attack. Um, because that allows us to put it on top next turn. No, it doesn't. Because I need another island. But in two turns, we can put it on top and get it back. So basically, I'm, I'm okay using it because eventually we'll get it back. Oh. Hmm, sad panda. That's okay. 
outflank still kills their flying fox. All right, we can stop drawing lands. We'll just fly over for one. This is vaguely awkward. I mean, we've oof, one, two, three, four non lands, eight lands. Okay, awkward sauce. And we don't have any artifact removal, so that's vaguely annoying. Okay, and we don't have an artifact or enchantment to bounce that guy. Um, yes, please. So the question is, is it worth playing just for the big dumb dudeness? We know they're going to get a 3-3 Vigilance soon. Hmm. Well, let's attack first. We know we're attacking for one in the air. That's easy. So we have, we got what, two wells, cauldron, two trap in the towers, charmed sleep, and then the prophet. So we have seven targets in our deck of 28. We know we're not drawing one next turn. I think we just play them out as a four or five. It's not ideal. Um, but we know it'll be at least two turns at that point, and this gives outflank a little bit more reach, unless they kill something here, which there's only so much we can do. This is where I really wish, I want the card below outflank to be a witching well. That would be really good on multiple levels. I'd be sad to crack it because it would plummet our flocks to the ground, but it would be worth drawing the cards at this point. We definitely need some gas. They've they've got a ton of cards in their hand, and we're not doing a whole lot. Oh, and that guy just kind of shuts us down. Okay, so they know we have outflank. If we attack with this... Um, They have to, they can't kill this guy because, well, they could. They could triple block. We would kill the Legion, then the Griffin, and then all they'd have left is the 2-2. Two -two. I think that's worth it. We want to keep more pressure on here. We we have flooded out. We need to do something. And with it, the only black one drop is that uh, plus two plus one death touch card, which would be a pain in the butt if they have it on this guy. Okay, so they're gonna triple block. We put this guy first. Yeah. This. Then we outflank this guy. Okay. We'll play our land just in case we draw something crazy. Or like even like the Witching Well, which we really hope is this card. Because uh, it gives us more options to draw and then play cards as well. Oh, bye, Fox. He never even got to fly. That's sad. Nope. Alright, anything but a land would be awesome here. Alright, well, something other than a land. Uh, I am not going to play that land. Um... When you have two lands in hand, it makes sense to play, but the one, I'd rather just leave a bluff up for something. Nope. Okay, so this becomes 
slightly problematic. We're still hitting them in the air. So we can flash this guy in. So we're taking eight if I don't block, which is a lot of damage. I think we have to play this guy What are you doing? Okay. Yep. I think we have to play this guy in block. That means they're only doing five this turn. Oh. Well, that's not good for us. Okay, I think at this point we don't win this game. We are officially in trouble. So if we don't block, we take eight and go to three and are 100% dead next turn. Here, we're only kind of dead next turn, which, you know, you play to live. Okay, so play this. We are not attacking. We are definitely in trouble. Block, block, block. We're alive? Oh, never mind. Never mind. We are so very dead. Very, very dead. We're just not going to block. Just punch us in the face, please. Ouch. Okay. Well, that's fine. That was our first loss. I'm still pretty happy with this deck. We can still win three more without too much problem, I think. All right, perfect. Yes. Um, I am completely okay with the sand. I really like the shine chaser. Hmm. Um, we definitely don't need another land. I don't mind having this guy as a two drop. Could go two drop, three drop, crack, four, get some counters on that guy if nothing else. Granted, that's assuming our opponent doesn't play anything good, uh, which, you know, we're hoping for. Uh, but it gives us options. All right, perfect. Now we'll play this so we don't screw up. We can play the Shine Chaser next turn. Just try to curve out with the flyers and get there. Alright. Ooh. Alright, so... We're going to attack for one in the air. It's kind of annoying, but we don't want to block because we know we're going to draw cards here soon. We're going to play this guy and also not block with him. If they have removal for this guy, we're probably playing the Witching Well, cracking it, draw cards, and get counters on the fairy. Um, and if they don't have removal... Oh, okay, that's a card. So next turn we're gonna play the cauldron and kill that. <laughs> no, got it. Okay, this this is uh, before this gets out of hand. Yeah, while I would have loved to draw some cards. That is a beast of a card. I'm wondering if they're mono... Okay, I was just saying, are they actually mono black? Did they get to do that? Because that's really... When you can draft like a mono color... Okay, hi. Well, this is annoying. Hmm. So we've got two turns before we play this card. And right now it's not... Nope, nope, nope. If anything, what we might do. All right, 
So what we're going to do, we're going to crack. Hmm. So I think we're going to attack, leave this guy back, crack this on his turn um, to get a county here and be able to block that guy. That sets us up for then the turn after that to play the Prophet of the Peak, uh, which blocks us for a two knight. I mean, this again is barring that they have removal at all. Um, This also gives us a, a possible out of cracking the well, getting the counter on the guy, and assuming they don't have removal, which is a big assumption. Uh, we also have the option to draw the outlast. Oh, hi, okay. They're playing all the good cards. Balls. Okay, that was an even better outcome for us than I expected. I will take it because All right. So again, we have a couple options here. We don't have anything to trigger him, which just makes them a 3-3. Three, three. It's better for us to do this and scry. We really want to find a trap in the tower. We really want to find a trap in the tower. Or a charmed sleep right now. And this guy blocks their stuff pretty well. Also makes this guy bigger. Alright. Um, I don't think we have anything getting... No. We don't have anything worth getting back. That's definitely going to the bottom. The 3-4 flyer dies to all of their stuff. While it does put better pressure... I'd rather just try to find one of our enchantment removals. I think it's just much more important at this point. I'm also just going to attack with this guy because last time they were pretty threatened by the guy staying back. And if anything, I want the Vandal to be able to block the Swordmaster. Okay, that's annoying. I'm really glad we killed this. We'd be in so much trouble right now. Oh my gosh. Yep, okay. Their deck looks really sweet. I'm pretty jealous. This is this is an awesome build. I don't know what else they got going on over there. Like if they have a baked in the pie or two. Oh, see, this is painful. Stop it. Yikes. They still have two cards in hand, too. Jeez, oh, Pete's. Alright, so... I'm really tempted to play this out as a 3-3. Three, three. But I think, I think I just need to attack in the air. This guy has vigilance, so it's fine. We just just brought him down to twenty, packed with starting life total. Jeez, oh, Pete's. All right, play more dudes. Like, oh man, we are struggle busting here. Oh, that guy's really good. Especially with all these guys. Oh, jeez. All the card advantage, all the life gain. This is getting owie. I think no matter what, we have to play the contender next. We really need a trap in the tower or something. If we get a trap, we can at least... I think lock down the paladin would be the first choice. It's almost tempting to block down the knight as well. Okay, so now we gotta do math. Um, they've got three mana open, but it's all black. So if 
worst case scenario, they're playing. They're going to get this by guy back. So let's do this. This. I'm trying. This. This is super awkward. Ugh, I don't like this at all. I mean, we may have been able to block the I don't know. I think we're just in trouble no matter what here. Ugh. Ugh. All right, so we're not actually dead. Just kind of dead. We're at two. He has a removal spell. We attack. We are dead. So I am not going to attack. Which is just a sad state of affairs when I'm sitting with a 5-5 five, five, and a 3-3 three, three, and I'm afraid of a 2-1. But he's going to attack in and get his 4-2 haste guy back. So this is a problem. I'm really not sure. Oh, jeez. I have no idea how we win this game. I think the best card we could draw would be the unicorn at this point. Sad as is to say. Okay, that works too. Okay, so we don't have any, oh we do, we have the profit. So maybe it is worth keeping that guy on top. Although, what do we, we don't actually want to bounce any of his stuff. I mean, the best thing we want to bounce, I guess, is the one drop. Everything else basically kills us or just gets him another card, which is super awkward. Yeah, I don't think we want that. I think we just want some of those removal spells. Awkward. All right. So one, two, three, four. Yes. Well, let's get a counter on this guy. We just need more creatures. We really should have been dead like three turns ago. That three drop should have just killed us basically. But we're holding on, we're trying. Okay, so we got trapped in the tower. We also have a fairy vandal. Right now, we're not dead. So I'll play that. Again, I can't attack. I'm in this awkward can't attack position just because I'm at two life and we don't actually have any life gain in this deck. Okay, so we're dead next turn. Got it. Oh boy. All right, that's uh. Yep, yep, yep.
So we're not actually dead. We're just mostly dead. So block here. Ah, come on. I mean, we're still dead next turn because he's going to kill us by sacrificing. Oh, wait, wait. We've trapped the tower, so we're not dead. But he's going to get this guy back. Okay, okay. So we're basically dead. Um, you just don't give up. You keep trying. If he has a way to pump that uh, that goose, we're in trouble. So he's got a haste guy, but we can block it. Oh. Come on. Oh, man. Yeah. Come on, another trapped. Come on. We'll keep hanging on. Not giving up yet. Okay, okay. Not giving up yet. Okay, now we give up. That is, uh, we're just gonna walk away with our tail between our legs. Balls. All right, we were doing so good. We just had a losing streak. So we can stop the streak now and start winning again. Like I said, we should have definitely been dead a couple turns earlier. We got that lucky with got lucky with that scalding cauldron, but yikes. All right, so one, twos, yeah, this is, I mean, I would really like to see another land, but no complaints here. Ideally, we draw another land either this turn or next turn, um, and this hand curves pretty perfectly. Perfect. All right. It is looking good. So we'll just uh... ooh, blue red. I haven't seen that yet today. Nice. Oh, I hope he has a bunch of dwarves. I mean, I kind of don't because that's bad for me, but I kind of do. All right. So we play this. We're gonna draw a second card. Get a counter on this guy. Which means we can kill a dwarf if he plays it next turn before they get out of hand and start doing seven to me. We can definitely not, we can stop drawing lands though at this point for a little bit. Nope, you got me. Um, I think we offer the, the one drop trade. I don't know if he sees value in this one drop or if it's worth stopping the extra point of damage. Hmm. Okay, that's fine. I don't need to use my outflank here. Let's uh, look what's coming up. Okay, all of the lands, which we don't need. We'll just put those on the bottom there. Uh, play this. And then we have options to throw the cauldron on the dwarf or something else he plays. Next turn we can wishing well and make this guy a 3-4, which is even better. If nothing else. Alright. Yep. You do you, buddy. Come on in. Ooh. Well, that's kind of fun.
Is he missing his fourth land drop? Oh. Uh, sure. Ooh, oh, thank you. Oh boy. All of the freaking lands. Okay, so. We could crack this now. Uh, I don't think it's worth one point of damage. So we're going to attack in and play the Pathlighter properly, Arena. Pretend I have spells. Dang it. Now, of course, this means we won't play the Moonlight Scavengers because we'll never get our sixth land. But, oh. All right. Doors are getting out of control now. All right. Nope. We're just going to take three. Oh, it's tiny. All right. Um, we have, even though they milled us, we have nothing in our graveyard at this point worth getting. So we have a couple options. I think what we're going to do here. One, two, three, four. Tap properly. Yes. So this becomes a one, four, which meh. Okay, so we now have this. And these aren't super scary, but I'm gonna trap in the tower one of them just to balance the life switching that we got going on. Plus it, it allows me to crack the cauldron and still have my scavengers open to do stuff with later. Because, like, bouncing the 1-1 one, one will feel pretty darn good. Alright. So. Yeah. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to play this. Yep. Bounce the 1-1. One, because one. this now gives us a blocker for the dwarves. As well as turning outflank on with the sanctuary up to get it back um and then we have cauldron available next turn in case he plays another flyer or draws some more cards like in this case he'll make one this definitely seems like a really fun card to build around i'm not sure it's only a two drop that doesn't seem that bad Oh. Okay. So we only have this guy, but I think we still want to use out flank here simply because we're going to get it back. Um, how many cards do we have? So if we play Mystic Sanctuary now, that gets out flank out of our graveyard onto our deck. Yes, please. Makes this guy bigger again bigger makes it a one four not super impressive don't get me wrong um but i think we're gonna we've got five eight so we can actually do both of these so for right now they have nothing scary and at worst they're gonna trade their they'll trade the fairy for the scavengers which will knock this guy back but they're gonna be down at five with no blockers on the field Whoa, no, 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 no. Arena doing it to me again. 
make the 2-2, two, two, and then make a 3-3. Uh, three, three. So we've gone a little bit wide. This guy got an extra counter from the, the path lighter. So he's got a, they've got to find a lot of different options. They've only got four mana, which means they're probably not sacking this, even though it would make a 1-1, one, one, but they're still just dead on board. They have the 0-4 and the 2-3, um, which is still problematic for them. Because I can attack in with a 4-4, four, four, and at best, it's just getting rid of the merfolk. I think we're having opposite problems. I drew all of, or I saw all the lands because we have what? Got three in here, I think. One, two, three. Ooh, they do something fun. All right, so. Well, they know we have outflank. We'll do that. We can basically, once again, wipe their board. Although, I'm not sure I'm going to, if if they block, well, they have, yeah. I'm not sure I'm going to cauldron the merfolk. I will outflank the wishing well, just because it means I can't draw cards later and it saves my 4-4. Um, again, they're still on the back foot. It's, it's almost tempting because then they still are in that have to play multiple creatures. But I think I'd rather just get rid of like the 2-3. They play that uh, on their turn. Uh, and then it makes my 4-4 four, four a little bit better. What you doing? Oh, nice. Sure. Um, I am going to cauldron this guy. It means he has to block with a zero four. It just kind of clears the field out a bit, even though it's probably not the way I'm winning. Um, it may have been smarter to save that. Oh, never mind. Um, for a flyer, in case he got one. But I kind of just like keeping the pressure on. He has to block. We know he has the 2 3. He has this 2 2 flyer. Alright, pay adamant. All right, so he hit his, they hit their fifth land. Okay. Yeah, still just dead, right? This is when I always start questioning myself if I forgot something in this format. Like, I don't think there's anything at zero mana. Or any, like, force of wills. Alright. Cool. Alright, nice. Broke that losing streak, which makes me feel much better. Okay. I mean, so at this point, worst case scenario, even if we lose the next round, uh, which obviously I'm hoping we don't. Ooh, all of the things. Holy moly. All of the common wild cards. 
So even if we lose this next one, I am completely happy with this deck going 6-3. Um, this has been a pretty decent deck, considering it's just commons and uncommons. Um, but again, evasion makes a huge difference in magic. You know, having evasion and removal, um, it adds up real fast in your favor. Uh, I wish, uh, again, we had a counterspell or two. I really think that's one of the things this deck is missing. Um, being able to stop some really important spells would be uh, powerful. Um, and putting cards in their graveyard would be important. Uh, it would let us run another so tiny. Uh, but at this point... Ugh. All right, so let's think about this for a second. We've got... We're going first. We've got an opt. We've got two removal spells, but we're not actually doing anything. This is not necessarily the hand I want to see. But I also don't think it's worth throwing back because we have the two removal spells and the op to set us up. Yeah, we're going to keep it. Again, it's not, I'm not super happy with the hand, but it's one of the cases of like, if I throw it back and get six and I get two lands, you know, and a bunch of three and four drops, uh, that's just worse than this. And now that we have that second Witching Well, um, we have more options to draw cards, so I'm a little bit more likely to keep something that has more lands and less spells, uh, especially a way to dig. <coughs> Excuse me. So what are, what are they doing over there? No reason to... We can just wait for their turn. Gives us some more information. Never a bad thing. Uh, oof. Yeah, nope. Okay, that's not a bad thing to see. Neither is that. Um, I think at this point we play the shine down and then we either trap or sleep whatever the best card is and swing for two. So we got a couple turns kind of played out. Depending, of course, what they do and what we draw, but okay. Red-white can be super fast, which is vaguely frightening. Um, not enough at this point to not stick with what we said earlier. I'm much more likely to charm something like this to sleep because it doesn't have any abilities. Um, but this is where we could get into trouble if they have like the red white knight that pumps other knights because we don't have a lot of actual removal. Keeping stuff like that on the battlefield can bite us in the butt super fast. Yeah, nope, not even thinking about blocking that. Um, this is also where, like, Joust can bite us because they'll have things to target because we're leaving field, leaving creatures on the field, um, which is why I really wanted that counterspell. But we'll see. See how things go. Yeah, okay. So... I am going to Charm to Sleep because that allows us next turn. Um, we'll have five mana and we can play the Tome Raider and then trap something. Um, gives us more options. We're still not really ever uh, blocking that youthful knight just because it having first strike and them probably having tricks is really bad for us. Ooh, okay, that's uh. That's not good. Okay. Not blocking. Let's see. All right, let's start. Nope. Let's start by drawing a card here. Okay. 
Okay, we don't have a knight. I'm really tempted to trap him in the tower and then bounce next turn whatever they play. Hi, Nathan. I see you. All right, let's see. Oh, this card's too good. All right, let's do this. They probably have significantly scarier creatures. Um, but this guy's just going to beat my face in super fast. Oh, this is super scary. <laughs> I love this card. Oh, they probably got all knights. Oh, boy. Okay. Oh, okay. Double striking guy. That's fun. <laughs> oh, no. All right. So we have a couple options. Do we? Yes. No, no, because we only have one planes. I was going to say we could theoretically play this knight into this and see if we get something fun. Um, I think at this point our best bet is to set them back. Because that guy will get out of hand stupid fast. They're going to outlast. Yeah. All right. Well, at least we got that out of their hand now, right? Okay. In an odd way, I kind of hope we draw a planes. Okay, we don't. So, let's think. We... Four. The question is, do we attack here and offer the trade with one of these guys? Because if they double block, this is dying. Hmm. I think so. I think we offer. And if so, we take out the double striking guy because it's going to be really hard for us. Yeah, I didn't think so. Balls. <laughs> All right. Um, this is going to have first strike if they draw a second card. <sighs> yeah, this is super awkward. I really want another plane so I can double play these. I think I'm just going to do this. If they have a way to draw a second card. That makes the Wolverines really good. I'm also not afraid to block the um, Raging Red Cap with the Rider because they have some kind of pump spell this guy gets out of hand really fast um, and I'm, I'll gladly trade the one damage I'd be doing back for the at minimum four damage I'd be taking. The question is if he attacks with both if I offer the trade with a griffin. No, okay. This is just simple. Okay, and oh, we have opt. <sighs> Why? Is he just gonna make a 2 2? I'm wondering why he didn't play anything, because he's got six mana and two cards in hand. And what does that change for us if that's the case? So if he plays a 2-2, two, two, double blocks, we can trade with both, unless he has a way to, unless he has that discard one and draw two. Uh, I still think, let's, let's see what they have. I 
this could be really bad. There is that plus two and untap a creature, which would be really bad. Okay, that's also painful. I'm completely, well, I'm not happy that I lost my guy, but I'm okay with, with how that ended up. Let's put the op back on top. And then, okay, we might regret this. And I fully recognize that fact. But I think if he attacks here, we're not going to block because we have the option next turn to opt, hopefully set up something with the acclaimed contender uh, and possibly find our other trapped in the tower. Okay, so we're never getting through on the ground again. So we're gonna start with the opt. Flank. See, as much as I love that card, it's definitely not punching this guy. We really need. Ugh, okay. Um, we've got five, we've got six mana. So at this point, if we play him. If we find trapped, we can't play it because we don't have enough land. We don't have enough white sources. But I still think we try to find it before we have to block with this 2 2 knight. Nope. Big ol' whiff. Alright. I'm gonna play this card. Draw a card. And there's the planes we need. Alright. Um, we are not attacking because he has a 4-7. That seems like a bad idea. However, we've gummed up the board enough at this point that we may be able to fly back over at some point. And scrap the flying plan. Okay. Awkward sauce. All right, um, so we're not attacking. Six, seven, eight. So we can't play both. I think it's better for us to play the flyer. Why do you do this to me, Arena? Because if slash win, we draw another removal spell, um, we can punch in and the flying. Uh, but right now, we are gonna get outpaced. Because he's just gonna be pooping out three threes. And that is a seriously good card. Oh, okay. See, this is the right deck for the contender. Oh, oh good. Oh good. He's got he's got good cards in his deck. Ah. All right, we are um Mhm. Mm we're officially in trouble. Okay. Yeah, that's exactly what I didn't need. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, no, that that is uh, not advantage, Brenda. Um. Yeah, yeah, that guy's really good. Oh, and he made a two-two for free. That's that's fun. Oh, oh. Even if we find a removal spell for the fox. He's on a four turn clock. We're on like a 
One. Oh boy. I can't. I yeah. I was trying to think of an out and. Uh, no, that's uh, that's definitely not it. I'm pretty sure he just attacks with everybody here and we just die. Like, just on board. I mean, there's a chance at some point I may have... Should have been a little bit more aggressive, but... I, oh, I mean, I could have traded the 3-3 three, three flyer and then poked in for one. Oh, goody. Oh, jeez. Okay, yep, nope. I think we're just dead on board. I'm I'm not gonna do math yet. Oh yeah, there's that guy. Oh, we're gonna We're gonna take a punch to the face here, folks. I'm pretty sure it's gonna be a lethal punch. Man, this deck looks like so much fun. Not to play against, to play. Um because we are gonna lose. Um, let's see. So this is the the big dude. So everybody's getting bigger to begin with. Yeah. Uh huh. You only have humans. I don't know why I'm happy the fact that he just has humans. Is this is this a human? Okay. Yeah. Oh, you son of a... How is that not a human? Mmm, stupid technicalities. Alright, uh, is there any even remote way we can survive? Let's see. Um, block the double striker. Let's block the biggest things. Let's block a six. How about we block a six? And I heard we like blocking sixes. Uh, and then block a... A six? Pretty sure we're just stupid dead. We look at all of the death. So dead. Oh, well. That was a painful way to go out. Oh, well. Like I said, our deck was blue white flyers. We didn't have a relevant rare, we had the one three drop which was slightly painful. Um, we had some evasion, but that's it. Uh, I'm not, I'm, I'm happy. We went 5-3. I wish we could have gotten one more win out of it. Um, but considering what was in the deck, did completely fine. Um, I don't think we really missed a whole bunch in the draft. Um, and I still think there's some wiggle room and discussion that can be made on how we built the deck. Um, especially with some of the choices we had. Um, and again, I really wish we had it, even just one counter spell would have made a huge difference, I think, in this deck. Um, not that that would have done us any good, a single counter spell against that last deck. Although, like, if we could have countered that legendary artifact, that would have been a huge deal. But anyway, uh, overall, the deck was fun. I think we did pretty good. Um, my plan is to kind of keep ranking up in uh, these ranked drafts for the next couple weeks so come back next week monday same time we'll be here and uh, we'll do another draft thanks for joining us have a nice night